<laughs> that was actually the first time that I came, so the only thing that I could compare it to was the taste of avocados. <laughs> Almost the same. The first time I got stoned, I ran into my friend's bedroom and I hung onto each corner of the mattress because I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that I was going to be flung into space if I didn't hold tight. <laughs> Two years before that, I went to my first concert and I was high all night and the first time someone clapped for me on stage, I floated three inches off the pavement walking home. Only one girl has ever really wrapped my stomach into pretzels. She didn't give me butterflies. She gave me pterodactyls. I'm talking terrible internal bruising, and the first time I kissed her was like the first time that I saw fireworks, which was like the sky first kissing me in the eyeballs. But in high school, the self-defense counselor taught us that we could defend ourselves against a rapist just by sticking a thumb into the corner of his eye socket and then popping it out like a grape. <laughs> Babe, for the chance to be with you, I would pop my own eyeballs out. And so here, I only have eyes for you. So no matter where you went, every time you pulled out a handful of loose change, I'd get to wink at you. And a thousand miles away, you think of how charming I am. Me, weaving blindly through LA traffic. You, in some bullshit other place. But you shouldn't leave first times until the end of summer. Because you went off to college, years passed, you stopped calling anymore, and that first kiss hardened into the last. My love, retarded, preserved, a pterodactyl in a tar pit, the music over before it started, a lost guitar pick. I've stopped trying to match it. Searching for some magical attachment because marriages are not Disney. You know, bad marriages are sandcastles. Good marriages even are McDonald's hamburgers. Because you can leave a good marriage on a plate in the sun for 30 years and it stays pretty much the same. <laughs> the key, I've heard from my dad, is to fight routine. To make the smallest moments gleam and mean something. And if you ever feel yourself fading, you face paint your old and aging, jaded, creased up cheeks gold plated. And if you need a youthful spruce up, grab a tube of that noob juice and loop up. And if you're hurting, you want the good stuff where you're burning. But a word of warning first time tends to make the bad times worse. And there's a rub. It doesn't make things better, it just makes them louder. It amplifies a murmur, er, er, because great is greater, greater is greater, er, and broke is broker. And bone is bone, er. It's not a perfect formula, okay? But the first time that you kissed me, the door of your cruddy civic already half open, you said I'm glad you did that. And I had a feeling that for you, it wasn't even a first time. It wasn't this one time. But I will remember that moment for the rest of my life, even if I have to all wrestle all timers for it. And if I ever get a chance to kiss you again, you know, a second time, I'm gonna lick you right across your face. Because I already kissed you, but I've never licked you. And you say, oh, why the fuck did you do that, George? And I'll say, who said to you? Did someone slap you across the face with a banana slug? Or is that a big shiny jail of face time? Thank you.